Tonight, astonishing UFO footage captured by two different witnesses. We believe that the object is about a half a mile long. The experts analyze the startling images. Is this World War II internment camp haunted by ghosts? It was just like a flash, and then it disappeared. This incredible videotape evidence may uncover the mystery. Will this woman's terrifying vision of the future come true? We see continuous rain for anywhere from two to four years. Is this secret government base the test site for alien technology? The biggest story in human history. We uncover the never-before-seen Top Secret Area 51 manual. A beloved high school teacher is shot down. She was a very intelligent, kind, and generous person. Now, the psychic detectives try to bring her killers to justice. Is this anonymous videotape proof of an alien abduction? It does appear to be an authentic video. On the paranormal borderline. September 7th, 1917. The little central Colorado town of Salida was visited by a UFO. It's right here on the front page of the local paper. There's an account of a visit by what we would now call a UFO. No big deal. But now they're back. And this time, we've got them on tape. Salida, Colorado is a small town nestled in the shadow of the Rocky Mountains. On August 27, 1995, a long cylindrical object appeared in the skies over Salida. This unidentified flying object was caught on videotape by a most unlikely UFO observer. See it going? Do you see it? Tim Edwards runs the family restaurant, the patio pancake place on Salida's main drag. Until he shot the video, his biggest concern was making the right change at the register and finishing up his new house. That all changed when he and his seven-year-old daughter, Brandy, went out to check the weather for a camping trip last August. So we walked over here underneath the eave, right in this area here, and Brandy, Brandy was standing right here, and Brandy said she looked up in the sky to see if it was gonna rain that day. I looked up and I said, I said to Dad, Dad, there's something there. And I didn't pay any attention to her. Again, now either something in the sky. He looked up in the sky and he said, it's just the sun. And then he looked up again and he saw it. And that's when I first spotted it. And I looked at it and I said, what in the heck is that? On the tape, you can hear Brandy talking to her father about what she's seeing. Dad, a spaceship grow bigger like that. Tim Edwards rolled tape for over an hour, breaking only to call his wife, friends, and authorities. The same object Tim taped was apparently sighted by a number of different witnesses across the region, according to the Colorado director of the UFO network, Mike Curtis. We have seven witnesses that called CU Boulder Astronomy Department um, about 12 to 18 hours after Mr. Edwards made his original videotape. In addition to that, about an hour prior to Mr. Edwards uh, making his tape at about 9.30 in the morning, uh, two gentlemen jogging in Grand Junction, Colorado, 250 miles away, saw the same object pass over Grand Junction at a high rate of speed. In Phoenix, Arizona, a similar object was also caught on tape by Tom King. Main craft. There is the main craft. Its similarities to the Edwards video are apparent. I didn't know really what this was until I showed some other people, and they said, you have the same thing that Tim Edwards taped. And I really didn't know at the time what he had. I just knew he had a large cylinder and hadn't actually seen the video yet. A split screen of the two objects shows how similar they are. For Kurt. The Edwards videotape is one of the most believable sightings he's come across. The original witness was a six-year-old uh, little girl. You just don't get six-year-old little girls to uh, tell stories and come up with things like this. The uh, fact that it's a daylight sighting is, is outstanding. It ranks right up there with, you know, some of the best quality video that, that we have and some of the best sightings. Uh, I would say it ranks certainly up in the top ten. So far, it's an unidentified flying object. But can it be identified? Tim Edwards sent his tape to the Phoenix-based Village Laboratories. The company has been working in the field of image processing since the 1970s, including a contract with the Jet Propulsion Laboratory for NASA's Voyager spacecraft mission. Company president Jim Delatoso subjected the tape to a series of tests. In analyzing video, we have to 
take this low resolution image, transfer it to the computer, and begin to study whatever we can. First thing, remove the noise. Take out the video noise, take out the lines, and then look for data. Taking into account the position and angle of the camera, the camera's optical characteristics, and the known size of other objects in the frame, Dilatoso came up with some startling conclusions about the size of the object and its distance from the ground. We believe that the object is about a half a mile long, about two to three thousand feet long, and about 75,000 feet in the air. What does that compare to? 75,000 feet, 15 miles. 15 miles in the air. Half a mile long, two Sears towers stacked end to end. Huge object. His computer analysis also spotted what appear to be moving lights within the object. This analysis reveals to us that there are definitely structures to the light. The data tends to support the concept that these are moving lights, moving with a pattern, moving with some intention. They move one direction, move back the other direction, and the brightness of the lights tends to support what the witnesses said. But even more amazing is the similarity of the object that Tim Edwards caught on videotape and the accounts of the 1917 sighting in Salida. Sightings that occurred in the same week, exactly 78 years apart. I thought, oh my God, it's happening again. <laughs> Reporter Arlene Chauvald found the account of the sighting in a 1917 edition of the Salida paper. Reverend Oakley, who examined it with a telescope one night, said he could discern an object which appeared to be a wheel. And while the wheel seemed to revolve or move about, very colored lights appeared. It could be almost the same story as what happened in uh, 1995. We could clearly see uh, two rows of windows on it and uh, a light sequence of uh, an upper row and lower row windows, a light sequence of red to a pale green to a red across the craft. The fact that in 1917 and 1995 in Salida, Colorado, two people viewed as reliable people in their town, 80 years apart, in the middle of nowhere, high in the Rocky Mountains, described the same thing. I think that's a remarkable coincidence. But why would a UFO come back to the exact spot in the exact week, 78 years later? What if the method of transportation for these large objects to come to our planet involve a coordinate with very specific physical properties? Polarity, resonance, magnetism, and they lock onto it, and that's where they arrive. There could be some interstellar homing beacon, either purposefully or naturally located high in the Rocky Mountains. Most weeks, Tim Edwards is out taping, looking for still another unexplainable object in the sky. After all, Native American legends describe the area as a window to other worlds. And the Spanish word salida means gate. Is Salida a gate through which we are being observed by visitors? Or is it a stopping off point for UFOs on their way elsewhere? We may just have to wait another 78 years to find out. If there are alien intelligences receiving this broadcast, let me extend an invitation. Bring your craft down and land right here. We have an excellent parking space waiting for you just across the paranormal borderline. Coming up next, a ghostly encounter at a World War II camp. There's an extremely strong spirit form around here. And later, a modern-day prophet has a chilling tale of the future. We see cities such as Los Angeles underwater. Plus, an exclusive look at top-secret documents from Area 51. It gives us an insight into what goes on at the base that we've never had before. Then, an amazing piece of videotape that some believe might be the first alien abduction ever recorded. The paranormal. He's got the evidence to prove it. Fox reporter Jim Schneebelt.